Hi, this week we're talking about the debt ceiling debate that's going on in Washington with Fiscal Policy Director Jonathan Small. Uh, Jonathan, let's start with uh, some of the most recent news. Uh, the President's been, of course, interjecting his opinion as Congress has been negotiating, uh, had a speech earlier this week. Uh, what were your thoughts about the President's comments? You know, he continued his theme where this idea that somehow government doesn't have enough revenue, we bring in over, government brings in over $200 billion a month, so over $2.4 trillion a year, but yet somehow that's not enough revenue for all of the promises or commitments is a term he likes to use. And so that we need more, and that we need to tax citizens more. And what would your uh, counter conversation be if you could address Congress, uh, Congress, excuse me, as the president did? What would you suggest the nation do? Well, I think that we saw a good measure that happened recently, the measure to try to get the Congress to pass a balanced budget amendment. Really what we're talking here is a problem where government can't do what everyone else is having to do, which is to live within its means. So that's really the only way you're going to fix the problems that Congress is having is a requirement that they have to spend less than what they bring in. It's becoming quite apparent through all the discussions and the information coming out of Washington that uh, this is a spending problem, not a revenue problem. Uh, now, with that being said, as the federal government has less money to spend, right. um, that, of course, impacts the state of Oklahoma. So what should our lawmakers be gleaning from this conversation? Well, definitely, you know, we've seen reports about the impact on Medicaid and the impact on the state budget as a whole mm -hmm. because federal funding makes up somewhere around 40 percent of state spending. But I think it's a good lesson, which we've talked about here, about detaching ourselves from federal government programs and finding Oklahoma solutions. That way, when the federal government can't get their house in order, it doesn't impact us as much. And that, of course, was the Founding Fathers' intent for the Republic, was that uh, states would be in charge of their citizens and their population to come up with their ideas, and that would differ from the states around them. So final thoughts, Jonathan, on uh, what we might expect to see from Washington in the, as, as the deadline that the President has established draws near next, next week. You know, I think that probably for those that appreciate the free market, we're probably going to see some sort of compromise that we won't be that happy with. But I think given the circumstances that we'll need to hope to do more in the future, I think, you know, fundamentally we've got to understand that it's a battle of ideas that's going on mm -hmm. in D.C. and that it's the idea that somehow that 33 or 36 percent of someone's property is not enough and that it needs to be increased more versus the idea that individual citizens know best how to use their money. And we understand that here at OCPA, and so uh, we greatly appreciate your continued support and investment in this organization and our mission uh, to advance free market principles and limited government in Oklahoma. Jonathan, thank you for your time and your continued work on economic freedom. And again, thank you all for your support. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you again next week.